of God with his people who has been called by his name and as we go before the Lord in prayer praying for mankind everywhere that God will look down upon us and bless us praying for this house PHG Bible Church 
the man of God, family and friends, all those who are watching on Facebook Live. Truly, we're glad to be here again in the house of prayer, in the house of God. And if anyone have any requests, just raise your hand and amen. And even though we are not speaking it out loud, but we can yet approach unto the throne of grace where we can obtain help in a time of need, in a time of trouble. Heavenly Father, gracious King, Lord, we thank you right now this day because this is the day that you have made. And, O oh Lord God, we shall rejoice and we shall be glad in it. Lord, you said in your word, enter into your courts with praise. Enter into your gates with thanksgiving, into your courts with praise. And to be thankful unto you and to bless your name. Because you are good. And your mercy is everlasting. Lord, as we come before you to this day, look upon your people right now. A people who have been called by your name out of darkness. We are chosen generation. We are royal priesthood. Your call is out unto your glory and to your praise. And oh God, we thank you right now, oh Lord, for another day. We just come to say thank you for your love and your kindness. Your tender mercies right now. Lord God, look up on our land today, up on our leaders, oh God. Lord God, those who are in Washington, oh God, in seats of authority. Lord God, you rule in the kingdom of man. Lord God, there's healing. Oh God, there's power in your name. Lord, there's deliverance in your name. And oh God, we come right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, let your will be done. Let your great name be magnified. Lord God, let your glory be revealed. Lord God, you are the one who sit in heaven. You are seated upon the throne. And oh God, you said in your word that wherefore shall we come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain help in the time of need. That we may obtain help in the time of trouble. Lord, this is a troubling time, oh God. And oh God, but you're able right now, oh God, to deliver your people. Lord God, you're able right now to heal, oh God. Lord God, you're able right now to deliver, oh God. Go, oh God, as we cry out to you. No other help we know but thee, oh God. You alone, oh Lord, is able, oh God, to calm the raging sea. Lord God, you alone, oh God, walked upon the waters. And oh God, you fed the 5,000. Is there anything too hard for you, oh Lord? Is there anything too hard that you cannot weep, oh God, and you will not mourn over your people, oh God? We thank you today. We praise you right now. We magnify you right now. Let the people praise to your Lord. Let all the people praise to your mighty King. Then the earth shall yield her increase. And we shall call you our God. And oh God, we thank you right now, oh Lord. And we praise you, God, for healing. We thank you for the word that shall go forth in this house. Lord God, let it, hurt, let it oh God, prick the hearts of the people. Let the songs of praise be upon their lips, oh God. As we worship before you, and as we praise your name, you are worthy, oh Lord. You are worthy, O oh King. You are worthy, Almighty oh God. You are worthy, Almighty oh Lord. You are the first. You are the last. We come to thank you. We come to lift you up. We come to give you the glory. Oh God, we thank you. We praise you right now. In Jesus' name. Amen. Scripture this morning is actually going to come from two passages of Scripture. First, in the book of Mark, chapter 1. Then also, in Matthew, chapter number 21. But first, we want to go to Mark, 
chapter 1, and we're going to be at verse number 21, then and also in Matthew 21, we'll be at verse 23. In Mark chapter 1, it reads, Then they came unto Capernaum, and immediately on the Sabbath, he entered the synagogue and taught. And they were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one who had authority, and not as the scribes. Now there was a man in, the, in their synagogue who had an unclean spirit, and he cried out, saying, Leave us alone. What, what have we to do? with you, Jesus of Nazareth? Do you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him saying, be quiet and come out of him. And when the unclean spirit had conversed him and cried out with a loud voice, he came out of him then they were all amazed, so that they questioned among themselves, saying, What is this? What new doctrine is this? For with authority he command even the unclean spirits. And they obey him, and immediately his fame spread it throughout the region round the Galilee and in Matthew 21 and 22 now when he had come into the temple the chief priests and the elders of the people confronted him as he was teaching and, and said by what authority are you doing these things who gave you this authority but Jesus answered and said to them, I also will ask you one thing, which, of, which if you tell me, I likewise will tell you by what authority I do these things. The baptism of John the Baptist, where was it from? From heaven or from men? And they reasoned among themselves saying, if we say from heaven, and it will say to us, why then did you not believe him? But if we say from men, we fear the, people, the multitude. For all were counting John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus and said, we do not know. And he said to them, neither will I tell you by what authority. I do these things. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Isn't he wonderful this morning? You know God like him. Hallelujah. He woke us up this morning. He put the breath of life in our lungs. And the day we come to just pour out that praise, give it back to him what he's given to us. Amen. How many are joined with us this morning in worshiping our great God?
everybody, if you know you're free in Christ, say, I'm free. Somebody, Hallelujah. oh, say, I'm oh Lord, I'm free, I'm free. Praise the Lord, I'm free. I'm no longer no bound. No more change holding me. My soul is resting. what we have in Jesus. Lift your voice one more time. Say, I'm free. I'm free. I'm free. I'm free. Praise the Lord. I'm free. I'm no longer bound. No more chains holding me. My soul is resting. Give him the praise, the honor, and the glory. Somebody all over this building, somebody lift up the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. There's freedom in Jesus. There is freedom in Jesus. There is freedom in Jesus. Praise the Lord. Turn to somebody and look at them and welcome them here today. And if you don't know them, just introduce yourself from a distance. <laughs> Hallelujah. Y'all ain't saying that. Y'all speak to them. Oh, y'all already done that. All right. Thank you. We're good. We're good. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. You may be seated. Oh, yeah. Praise the Lord, hallelujah, I'm free. Well, welcome everybody to Power, Hope, and Grace. Man, we believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. We believe in the hope that goes beyond this life. And we all understand that we're saved by the grace of God. If it had not been for the Lord on our side, we would, not, we would not have made it. We would not be here today. We thank God for another Lord's Day. Thank God for all of those that have joined us here in the sanctuary and those who are joining us by streaming live. Amen. And those that are sitting here, they are social distancing and they're wearing their mask. And we do encourage you, let us help one another out. We don't want anybody to be offended or offset. So. Uh, for the sake of others uh, as well, wear your mask. 
your face dress. One of these old days, <laughs> this will all be over. <laughs> when, I don't know, but it'll all be over. But until then, we do encourage you and our deacons, they encourage you. So if they ask you to wear a mask, do not get upset with them. Do not be angry with them. Uh, you can take it out on me if you want. Uh, I've been doing this for a long time, <laughs> but uh, we do encourage you. Once again, thank God uh, he has blessed us. And listen, let us thank God for some much needed rain. We needed some rain, absolutely. It's been dry, it's, but thank God that we got some good rain last night and I hope some more come. Yeah, I wouldn't mind if one of those rains came where it just drizzled like for 24 hours straight, just. Oh, y'all, see, y'all don't understand. You all don't understand. We need the rain. We need the rain. And my grass is brown. I'm serious, some parts of my grass is all, almost this color. <laughs> And that's because uh, I don't turn on the water sprinkler because I don't like that water bill. <laughs> so thank God for the rain. Rain some more. You know, we just sing that song, send it on down, Lord, send it on down. Lord, we just say send the Holy Ghost, but Lord, send the rain <laughs> right on down. So God is good. We made it through another week. And um, we appreciate God for that. The truth is somebody laid down last night was making plans to be a part of this day and they are not here <clears throat> to be a part nor to tell the story, but here we are. Uh, another opportunity to worship the Lord, to praise the Lord, to tell God, thank you for who you are and thank you for what you have done for us. So uh, we are trying to do the best that we can. So remember, as I've been saying uh, week after week, church does not stop. We may have to change methods, but church does not stop. And we understand that, that some things backslid this week, but I'm maintaining and looking the front slide, <clears throat> not backslide. And I encourage you once again, do not live in fear. Do not panic. Trust God. Put your hope in God. He's the one that's keeping us day by day. Amen. Hour by hour. Minute by minute. So we do just remind you before we go into the word of the Lord. Uh, let us keep the uh, Robertson family in our prayers, Sister Beatrice, Brother William, Brother Arthur, and the loss of uh, a brother, a younger brother. So our prayers are with them as they are working, the family is working to get arrangements and things together. And then also for one of their sisters who is having some um, medical uh, issues that she's confronted with. And uh, let us remember Sister Cheryl Teals as well. Keep her up in prayer. And uh, those that may not have had the opportunity or have been done it in a while, definitely feel free to check in on her. Sister Joanne Lilly, keep her in prayer. She had a uh, medical setback, but she's doing good and doing better when I talk with her. And she's looking to be home maybe tomorrow or by Tuesday. So we are grateful for that. <clears throat> Sister, Lither, Sister Elizabeth. Amen. Love, joy, keep her in prayer. And all of our seniors, and I want to encourage you again, if you haven't checked in on them in a while, call our seniors, check in on them, and uh, let them know that you love them and that you're praying for them. Matter of fact, let us make that our goal again this week. Uh, get the phone numbers, get the list, you know. And you know, some of our seniors, they, 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 they text and they on Facebook, and all of that stuff too. I'll I, I be seeing them. Uh, and they, some of them know that Facebook stuff better than I do. 
So let's contact them. Just think of uh, maybe three seniors um, that is part of the PHG church family and call them. And you young folks too, they would love to hear. That would shock them. They would love, but it would shock them in a good way. You all call them and check in. So you all huddle up. You all get together. And uh, uh, Kendo, you can say, Charlie, you can call these three. I'll call these three. And don't be saying I ain't got their numbers. Check, check with mom. Okay, mom got their numbers. Call the church office. Uh, you too. All right. <laughs> You too, Johnny. It's good to see you today, buddy. Your haircut look nice. Yeah, looking good, man. So, uh, it's all right. We want to help cheer our senior saints. Amen. We want to cheer them up. So they would love to uh, hear uh, from you. I uh, talked to some this week and uh, tried to uh, 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 contact uh, another one and and was not able, and, and this is the other thing, and this is so important. When you are change your phone number, please let us know. I'll be dialing numbers, and then next thing I know, boom, this number is out of service. And then I'll be dialing cell phone numbers, and like, uh, uh, you got the wrong number. <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute. So we have to update, make sure we update. When you change your number, call the church office, and let us know um, what's going on. As one of our seniors, I had called them, I had called them several times. And uh, I told them, and uh, I finally got them on another number. And I said, I've been trying to call you. And all they said was, oh, really? And I didn't bother it. I was just glad that I got them on the number I got them. You know, and if, you know, that's the only way that we can contact if, if we have the right number. Um, and some people change numbers. I, I just didn't, I don't quite, I don't know. People change, they just change numbers, I mean, so many times. Yeah, I've kept the same number for 20 years. Oh, that ain't in vogue, that's not in style to keep the same number. But people be changing numbers, so uh, keep us updated. Is that all right? So we can uh, call. So I did my three this week, and I'll do three more. Now, don't be calling me because I ain't a senior. I'm talking about, well, well, I'm calling you. You said call the seniors, Pastor. Stop it. The devil is a lie and the truth ain't in them. All right, you can call JoJo, and, and you know. <laughs> Uh, and call Earl. <laughs> okay, but, um, and that's our way of engaging. See, when we are not able to uh, have church in full numbers, what we don't want is to become comfortable in not seeing each other. We don't want to become comfortable in not checking in on uh, one another. And Joe, I was gonna call mother this week and I got tied up and it got by me. She celebrated her 85th birthday. My wife tells me, Mother Roberts, Mother Margaret Roberts, 85 years old, God bless her. And just a very uh, wonderful, she said, Mama's looking good too and doing good. She's just a very wonderful woman of God, full of godly wisdom and knowledge. And uh, she has been such a great blessing to my wife and family and me personally down through the years. She have encouraged me along. So I thank God for Mother Robert and I'll be looking to uh, make a call to her as well. Okay, so you all check in, don't get used to not, you know, uh, we haven't been able to see each other, uh, you know, as consistently as we once did. And I know they have all of this, uh, what they call it is FaceTime and, and things like that and zooming in and all of that's good as well. And we can take advantage of those things, but I like to physically see people. So we'll be happy when we can shake hands again. Uh, and you know, instead of elbow bumping, we can get back to fist bumping and then shaking hands and then hugging one another. 
And I know some of y'all are not delivered, so I want nobody hugging me, and, 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 and especially right along through, through here. Come on, where's your power? <laughs> <laughs> See, back before all of this, you was rebuking stuff. I ain't heard nobody rebuking Corona lately. <laughs> you was pleading the blood. Ain't nobody plead nothing. Like, don't touch me. Don't violate my space. Wait a minute. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now, what did you say? <laughs> all right. So, um, <clears throat> God is good. We are back in our two sessions on Tuesday of Bible teaching so you can join us and those are aired also by on way of stream uh, Tuesday if anybody want to come out on Tuesday afternoon you can feel free we are over in the Samuel Tolver uh, room and um, we're practicing proper distancing there as well so you can come out and join us in Bible class if you don't make it out check us out. I was talking to one of our seniors this week and they were saying that they watch us all the time. And um, another uh, sister was just saying uh, I was watching the service and uh, it was just so beautiful, was not able to make it. And they said that uh, the word of the Lord and the service just had them in tears, tears of joy. And that's uh, a good thing. I refuse with the help of God to be defeated I refuse to allow my mindset to be incarcerated by the pandemic and everything else that's going on. I'm not going to let this stuff stress me out. And uh, when I say that, that's through God's help, the working of the Holy Spirit, because I don't have the strength and the power in and of myself. But there is a God. Hallelujah. And we have a right to lift up our eyes to him as Israel did. And we can ask him for his uh, help. Amen. So I am not scared. Let us go back to the book of uh, Joel or Joel. Pass me not, O oh, gentle Savior. Hear my humble cry. While on others thou art calling, do not pass. Verse 15. Say, yeah. Say, won't you hear? Hear my heart. humble cry. Oh. Wow. Oh, no. Wow. 
verse 15 of Joel chapter number 1 reads like this, Alas, for the day, for the day of the Lord is at hand. Hmm. It shall come as destruction from the Almighty. Is not the food cut off before our eyes, joy and gladness from the house of our God? The seed shrivels under the clods. Storehouses are in shambles. Barns are broken down, for the grain has withered. How the animals groan. The herds of cattle are restless because they have no pasture. Even the flocks of sheep suffer punishment. Verse 19, O Lord, to you I cry out, for fire has devoured the open pastures, and a flame has burned all the trees of the field. The beasts of the field also cry out to you, for the water brooks are dried up, and fire has devoured the open pastures. We read uh, verses 15 through verse 20 of Joel chapter 1 which completes uh, that chapter and uh, in verse 15 he says again alas for the day exclamation point and attention get her beware <clears throat> take note pay special attention to what because alas finally here it comes. Upon the horizon is the day. And he continues in the second line of verse 15. For the day of the Lord. So that day is clearly defined not just as any day. But alas the day. He did not say in our culture whether it was Sunday Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, or Saturday, but that day that is on the horizon is identified as uh, the day of uh, the Lord. <clears throat> and that would be our title of this lesson today, simply the day of uh, the Lord. We shared with you in our previous lesson that the book of Joel is considered here as the oldest uh, prophet, the oldest uh, prophecy. And uh, here in the book of Joel, the things that we were able to share with you thus far, Joel is that in the sense of the term, the trailblazer. He brings up things uh, in ways that other, uh, others prior to him did not bring up, but there were other prophets after him that built upon what he said and or used some of the same language and illustrations that Joel used. So this is why studying the book of Joel becomes very important because this assistance establishing the foundation concerning other prophecies that would eventually come. Here, the day of the Lord, this is the first time that it is mentioned in the Bible. And uh, subsequent to this, it will be listed or talked about in the Bible in uh, at least 18 other passages throughout Scripture. In both the Old Testament and the New Testament. But predominantly in the Old Testament, this term, the day of of uh, the Lord is uh, made mention of in some way or another. There may be other scriptures in the Bible as we may point out later that would talk about the day of the Lord or some of the events that may center around what is called the day of the Lord but it may not necessarily use the term the day of the Lord. But here in Joel he puts out up front to the people of God that alas and alas is again an attention getter something to warn the people to let them know something else <clears throat> is getting ready to go down now if you followed us in our last lesson we shared with you that there was a problem that Judah experienced 
And that problem was the locusts that came to devour the land. Not only did uh, locusts eat the, the uh, crops of the field, the food, but the locusts ate all of the greenery of the field. The locusts uh, destroyed the trees and things of that nature. We won't go back into all of that, but there was at least four categories of the destruction of locusts. And by the time the locusts got through, oh, now watch this, by the time the locusts got through, there was nothing left in the lands. There was no crops that could be gathered in to store up into the barns. There was nothing for the animals to eat. Uh, the water in and of itself was affected uh, because it is something about uh, locusts, those that have done more in-depth studies in regards to uh, locusts, when locusts come in and swarm the land, it is something about what they do that sometime many of them would even go towards the river or the sea and the reason they would go towards the river and or the sea was to try to get to the vegetation that's in the river we call it seaweed or lily pads the locusts would try to go and eat that but the problem that they would encounter when they would swarm the water is that they could not get to the vegetation and they would be drowned and uh, uh, depending upon the, the multitude of locusts that would come over the land, they would drown in the river and the river would be infected by dead locusts. And the water now is no good for drinking and no good for anything else. And not only that, but after a period of time, after the locusts would drown, then they were left there as dead uh, insects and then you know what would come next there would come a stench from uh, the dead uh, locusts the dead multitude of uh, locusts so here it is uh, Judah experienced this <clears throat> The priests, as we already told you, they could not bring sacrifices into the temple to offer up sacrifice to worship God. So therefore, everything in Judah's life was hindered. Everything in Judah's life was hampered. They could not function. They could not carry out their ministerial obligations. They could not effectively assemble together. Uh, the crops were eaten and uh, I mean, de destroyed. And once the crop was destroyed, there was no surplus. So it would just be a matter of time where famine could come in the land. Oh, you know, and we had dealt with this to some small level a few months ago when everybody due to the pandemic was running out to the stores the stores was talking about uh, the shortage that was coming about there was a, a a potential meat shortage there was a toilet paper shortage there was a grocery shortage but then it was just a matter of time that uh, society began to uh, basically balance out when it comes to the food industry and uh, things of that uh, nature and that they were able to produce and restock the shelves. But here, Judah was not able to restock. Oh my. And then the animals now, they are hungry because the locusts ate up all of their food. The, lo the ox could not eat grass because the locusts destroyed, devoured the grass. The deer and the gazelle could not eat from uh, the leaves of the tree because the locusts destroyed all of that. And whatever else the animals would eat, there was nothing there. Are you all following that? So this was just a horrible situation, a bad situation. Lord have mercy. Uh, the priests, they uh, had uh, uh, an indefinite layoff. And it was not that they wanted to be laid off, it was just that they didn't have anything to operate with. Went to church, couldn't offer up. All of this was going on until the land was left parched. But Joel says something here, people of God, 
That is very interesting to me. If I may have your undivided attention. Joel says all of this has gone on and we left off in our last lesson of reminding you that uh, God dealt with Joel to tell the people to get yourself together and consecrate a fast, call a sacred assembly, gather the elders together. <laughs> Get all the people of the land together and you all go down in sackcloth and ashes and call on the name of the Lord. Now sackcloth, we're going to come across this again, but sackcloth was a, a garment that the prophets and others would wrap themselves in. <clears throat> And it was a garment or a blanket uh, that was not smooth like silk. It was a garment that was rough. And what they was actually doing was what the Old Testament called, they were afflicting their soul. So they could withdraw from everything else and give all of this time over to God. So when they would wrap themselves in sackcloth, that sackcloth would irritate their skin. And uh, one of the reasons that that was good is because that would potentially help them to not fall asleep during their prayer. Sometimes when we pray today, our number one MO is to find out how comfortable we can get. We get two pillows and we get a thick blanket and a quilt and uh, we get our house shoes and we sit down and we say, I'm going to pray. And how many of us know how well that goes? We get down there and in seven minutes, we in a whole nother land called the land of sleep and slumber. But I dare you to get uh, uh, some sackcloth and kneel on some sackcloth, kneel on a hard floor. You know, we don't kneel on hard floor nowadays. We say our knees hurt. Arthritis is setting in. But this is what they would do, and they would do this as an outer display of an inward heart conviction. So that's why they would, uh, uh, ashes uh, uh, denoted, and the sackcloth denoted a time of remorse and a time of uh, repentance. So when we did share with you that all of the other prophecies called the people together during their assembly for a time of joy and jubilee. Joel is the first prophet that comes on the scene and said, nope, don't jump, don't shout, don't get happy. He said, mourn and cry and show some remorse and repent. Now look at what else Joel says. Joel says here, alas, the day of the Lord. Wait a minute, Joel. All what we went through already, the locusts came in, ate up the land, uh, ate up all of the trees and, and left us no food. The animals can't eat. We can't eat. Our children can't eat. The elders and the priests, they can't function. And now you are telling us, wait a minute, the day is still coming. Are you all following that? The day. Now, we have experienced this to some limited extent because when the pandemic, when we really found out what was going on, there were people that were going around asking, calling in, calling pastors, calling radio show, saying, are we in the last days? Is this the last days? What? Because the Bible says that there will be pestilence and there would be diseases. And I'm sure that there were those, no doubt, in Joel's day that thought or felt that enough was enough. All of what we went through with the locusts coming in and Joel is not finished with his prophecy and he comes around and said, the day of the Lord is at hand. What in the world is going on? And many people may have felt that way, in particular right here in the United States of America. See, the, 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 the citizens of the United States of America, can I tell you what our problem has been? Thank you, I'm gonna tell you anyway. Our problem has been is that we have been spoiled. Many people in America don't know how to suffer. 
There are people right now, they don't know how to suffer. You know as well as I know that there's somebody that you know that might be sitting right next to you when there was a food shortage. People was going to Walmart buying stuff that they couldn't even afford. And some folks still got that stuff way back that they bought three months ago. Because America don't know how to suffer. Our lights go out and we're like, oh my gosh, I'm going through. I don't know what I'm going to do. What, 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 what happened? My lights are out. Your lights are out and you're going through like that. Now, I'm not talking about you unless I'm talking about you. And if I'm talking about you, say ouch and then say amen so we can move on. We don't know how to suffer. I shared with you when we were in uh, Haiti. Uh, it matters not how hot it gets, that it gets dark relatively early. And there are people that walk to church every night up hills and mountains and long roads uh, with no light. You go in a community, they do not have running water and they do not have electricity. And you can walk through any given community and it is pitch black. I'm talking about right now today, pitch black and dark. And all you hear is voices sitting out on the porch trying uh, to get a breeze because it's so hot. And this is how they live every single day, day after day after day. And a pandemic break out, and of course, something that we're not quite used to, that people, oh my God, they think it's the end of the world. But can I prophesy to you, just like Joel prophesied to Judah, we haven't seen anything yet. Just as what they went through would not necessarily be compared to what was coming. Now I know we live in a day and time where people come to church and you that are tuned in, we don't want to hear doom and gloom. We don't want to hear that. We want to hear, tell me something good. I like it. I like it. We want people to tell us, uh, these young folks had no clue what I just did. All right, uh, 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 we, we want something that's going to make us jump, something that's going to make us shout, something that's going to make us run. People sometimes want you to prophesy to them and tell them sow a seed and in seven days you're going to be blessed. But Joel wasn't telling them to sow a seed. Nor was he telling them in seven days you're going to be blessed. Oh, how many of us are ready to shout now? He wasn't telling them in seven days you're going to be blessed. He said, alas, the day of the Lord. Wait a minute, Joel, we just went through. Alas, the day of the Lord. Wait a minute, Joel, the locust came and ate everything up. Alas, the day of the Lord is at hand. And that which is at hand is that which has not happened yet, but it's fitting to. It's getting ready to happen. So this pandemic that we're going through right now, it is just uh, emblematic, it is just a sign of what will eventually one day come and it will be worse and the comparison uh, cannot necessarily be weighed on the same scale. Things will get uh, worse in uh, some sense before it gets better. But may I remind you for the born again believer, even a day like today is one of the greatest hours that a believer can shine. Because in this hour of pandemic, in this hour of test, in this hour of trial, the believer has the message that is the antidote to the situation. And that is Jesus Christ is Lord. He is Lord. He is king. <laughs> he is savior. He is a way maker. He is our deliverer. So the Christian has an opportunity to stand up. So Joel says in that last line of verse 15, he says, it shall come as destruction. You all see that? It shall come. Wait a minute, we just went through. You see how quiet it gets, but I, you know, I found out after preaching for a while, sometimes when you get this quiet, that means you're really saying something. Sometimes you're going 90 down the road, and everybody jumping and shouting, you, you need to probably go back and check what you're saying. <laughs> Joel said, it shall come. It has not come yet, but it shall come. And what's going to come? Destruction from who? The Almighty. 
May I remind you that God is not through with what he is uh, doing. God is not through in even that which he allows. It was the Apostle Paul that made statements such as, I have learned in whatever state that I am therewith to be. Three people, let the record reflect, three people know that. I don't know how many in Facebook land know that, but Paul said, I have learned. And I'm going to tell you something, people of God, fellow believer, we all must learn how to be content. And content says uh, that when we go through, uh, that God is still worthy no matter what. And I'm going to give God what he deserves. And God deserves uh, all of our praises. But there comes a point and a time where Joel said uh, that uh, even though uh, the food uh, is cut off before our eye, even though, verse 16, there is no joy and there is no gladness from the house of God because we cannot worship and do the thing that we desire. We plant seed, but the clods, and that has reference to the dirt is so hard. There is clunks of dirt. The dirt now is so dry until it's like clay. So if you plant a seed, the seed cannot germinate. The seed cannot sprout. And uh, there is no moisture in uh, the ground that gives the seed any strength to yield. So this is now what is going on. There is nothing in the barns. You can't go to the barn because everything now has been taken off the shelf because a drought have come into the land and everything that was stored up is now gone and we are left empty. And he says in verse uh, number um, 18 to hear he says and look at what is happening he said the animals grown now if the animals are groaning you know the human beings are groaning as well why because they don't have anything have you ever been in a situation in life where things seem to have gotten so uh, bad that all you could do was groan I just mmm mmm mm, 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 mm. mm, mm. Mm, mm, mm. Well, this was the kind of dilemma that Judah is finding herself. The animals is groaning. And the animals that is groaning, the cattle is groaning because they have no grazing ground. They have no pasture to go and eat grass. And the flocks, they are suffering punishment. When the day of the Lord comes. The Bible says this in the uh, New Testament, and as Jesus talking, Jesus says this. He said, listen, there is going to come a time of tribulation that has never been known to man. And it is the tribulation that will uh, come that has never been known to man. Then he said, uh, then after that shall the Son of Man appear in his uh, glory. The Son of Man is going to appear. And the stage is going to be set up, Jesus said, because uh, the uh, heavens are going to get dark. The sun will not illuminate its light. The stars would not twinkle. The constellation would, as it were, be fused out or die out. But then all of a sudden, like lightning flashes from the east to the west, the Son of God is going to come uh, in his glory. But when is that going to happen? That is is going to happen after the tribulation of those days. So everybody wanted to get better. And I promise you with the help of God by the time we get through this, I ain't gonna leave you in the valley. <laughs> Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, we coming out of the valley. <laughs> We ain't gonna stay in the valley, dig. We're coming out. But until then, David understood that. And he said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. But notice what he said. He had to go through the valley of the shadow of death. 
Judah had to go through. And Judah had to go through, and here it is, catch that. Judah had to go through because of her transgression, because of her sin. And Judah was God's elect people. And I'll tell you this, even as believers, uh, when there is iniquity in our life, there are some things that we must go through. God does what? He chastens uh, every son that he loves. God will chasten you. And anyone that refuses that chastisement, the Bible says you are illegitimate. You're not really God's son. All right. You see, ain't nobody shouting now. I told you that shouting be you. You say it's the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is talking and ain't nobody shouting. Mm -hmm. Moving right along, he goes on to say in verse uh, number uh, 19, he says, this is Joel talking. And uh, Joel is the prophet. Joel is the leader. He is the voice of God, the mouthpiece of God to the people. He is the gap man. He is the one that stands in the breach. And uh, he is uh, the person uh, that comes to the people and tell them what thus says the Lord. So he says in verse 19, he says, Oh Lord, to you I cry. I'm going through. The locusts have come in. And now you're talking about the day of the Lord. And the day of the Lord is uh, ultimately going to be worse than what has already happened. But he said, Lord, to you I cry. So for us today, it is important for us to know who to go to and who to turn to in the time of uh, trouble. In the time of suffering, in the time of uh, going through, in the time uh, of uh, affliction, it is important for the people of God to know that God is still on the throne. And what God will do for his people, now this is not going to happen for everybody because remember, the day of the Lord is the destruction of the Almighty. See, this earth, the Bible said that this earth right now, just as the sons of God groan, and yearn for the coming of the Lord, for the manifestation of the sons of God. In other words, every individual that is a born-again believer, there is something in the reservoir of their soul that yearns for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Something that yearns for this mortal to put on immortality, for this corruptible to put on inner corruption. And why uh, is that? Because uh, in our soul, in our innermost being, in that relationship that we have with God, uh, God works in us to remind us that this earth and this world as we know it now is not our home. So the destruction of the Almighty comes to the believer by way of test and trial so we can kill out the flesh. Can I get a witness? Uh, Paul says this in the book of uh, Colossians. He said, mortify therefore the deeds of this body. You got to kill it out and you have to do what? Set your affections on things above and not things down here in this earth. And the late Bishop Cray used to say it like this, that quit catering to the flesh. The only thing our flesh needs is a good killing. Because this flesh loves the world too much. This flesh loves stuff and things too much. This flesh loves that which the world's offer, unfortunately, sometime greater and at a higher level than that which God offers us. So the Bible lets us know that uh, our inward man should be built up daily with the understanding that our outer man is decaying every day. So just as the Lord works on uh, this natural body, and Paul says it like this in Romans 6, 12, he said, I write to you that you not allow sin to have dominion and reign in your mortal body. So we have to constantly kill out this flesh and God's way of saying yes, I got to destroy the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye and the pride of life by allowing 
the testing the trials and the tribulation to rub against the grain because that is when God gets uh, the believer's attention. Sometimes the believer, and you know this to be true, that sometimes we don't pray like we should pray. Sometimes we don't do the things that we are supposed to do in God until trouble come. When trouble come, uh, then we run uh, to God and say, oh Lord, help me. And in the same like manner, this is what Joel did. Joel says in verse 19, Oh Lord, to you I cry. I'm coming to you, God, because this destruction is from you. So God, I'm crying out to you. He says for everything that we are experiencing, everything that we have uh, uh, experienced, uh, when the locusts came and devoured the land, it was like a fire came through and just devoured everything. Like everything was just uh, blown up. Everything was just consumed. But God, I cry to you. Now here's what I want you to catch. Joel was a prophet, so that made him the leader of the people. So he had to cry first. And it would have been up to the people to look at what Joel was doing and if Joel was crying out to the Lord then that was to trickle down to the people of Judah they were to cry out to the Lord and look at how necessary and how powerful this was not only was the prophet to cry out to the Lord not only were the people to cry out to the Lord but now the animals are crying good God almighty God knows how to send enough trouble to make your dog pray God knows how to send enough trouble to make your cat pray. God knows how to send them enough trouble to cause the rat to stop ratting and it pray because it doesn't have anything to uh, eat and you and I both know that it is those times in life where we can really cry out to God when we are going through hell and hurt and pain and frustration and sickness and trouble. We cry out to God and when we cry out to God here's one thing that I'm glad about being a believer that the Bible says that when we cry guess what God does God will hear our cry and incline his ear to our prayer for the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and his ears is open unto their cry somebody that believe that give him praise give him honor and give him glory But everybody is not going to uh, catch that because here it is. Uh, we talked about the flesh. Now here's what God going to do with this earth and with this world. And that's why it is so important for us not to get so attached. This earth and this world is going to be destroyed as we know it. See, there can never be a new heaven and a new earth until the present heaven and earth is dealt with. So God has to deal with this earth. And uh, uh, depending uh, uh, upon what side of eschatology that you are on, there's some uh, that believe that God is going to initially refurbish this earth so Jesus Christ can come down and sit upon the throne of his father David during 1,000 years uh, of millennial reign. Then after 1,000 years of uh, millennial reign, uh, then God uh, uh, is going to take believers all back with him and he's going to destroy this uh, earth. He's going to destroy the heavens uh, as we know it now because Isaiah talks about it Jeremiah hits on it and the book of Revelations let us know as well as the book of Peter that this earth is going to melt with a fervent heat you know what that is uh, the judgment of uh, God won't you remember that when God made this earth he made everything perfect he put a garden in it called the garden of Eden put a perfect man in it uh, and put a perfect woman in it but gave them of the ability to exercise their will and they chose to not honor God and Adam sinned and when Adam sinned God came and dealt with Adam and when God dealt with Adam because of Adam's sin not only was Adam now had to deal with the fallen nature but this earth was affected uh, because of Adam's sin this earth brought forth thorns and thistles and God told Adam by the flesh 
sweat of your brow, you uh, are going to have to work and earn a, a living. God said to Adam, your wife is going to be after you. She's going to want to supersede. She's going to go ahead of you. She want to go before you, but you're going to have to do what you have to do and be the head and bring that thing uh, under control with the help of God. And not only that, but her conception is going to be multiplied. In other words, her body now is going to be out of whack. It is not going to be like God initially intended uh, for it to be. And in sorrow, she's going to bring forth her children. And she's going to bring forth children not only in sorrow, but in pain uh, as well. But if she hang in there, if she hold on, if she deal with a certain amount of sorrow and deal with a certain amount of pain, God says she will be saved. What are you saying? Yes, this earth is cursed, but one day uh, the almighty God is going to destroy it completely, but he's going to create a new heaven and a new earth. I wish there was somebody in here that understood what I was talking about, but before that happened, judgment has to come. Before that happened, tribulation has to come. Before that happened, Lord have mercy, sin has got to be dealt with. So in every instance in the Bible, when it brings up the day of the Lord, you are dealing with the judgment of God. Isaiah talks about the day of the Lord in Isaiah chapter number 13. But when Isaiah brings up the day of the Lord, um, Isaiah is reminding uh, Judah that because of your sin, uh, the king of the north is going to come, which was uh, the Chaldeans and Babylon. They're going to come and they're going to bring you down into captivity. And you are not going to come out of captivity until you turn back to me, until you turn back to my law, until you go down in sackcloth and ashes and uh, repent. Friend of mine, this pandemic is not supposed to steal our prayer but it's supposed to make us pray better and make us pray more. Are you all hearing me today? What we're going through is not supposed to run us away from God but it's to run us to God. What we are dealing with is not for us to look at and say well I don't have to get ready for church. You know I can stay home. I can rest and relax. No friend of mine somebody need to go down in sackcloth and ashes and say Lord I don't know how long this is going to be but however long it is just a closer walk with you that's my prayer God is a closer walk with you I don't want this thing to pull me down but I want it to draw me nearer to you and nearer to the cross somebody tell God thank you God knows what he's doing and God wants somebody to cry out y'all gonna help me close this won't you God well I'll ride with the three people Joel cried <laughs> the beast of the field cried and Joel while he was praying interceded for the beast and said, God, the beast of the field also cried. Now, how did Joel know that? I don't know. But whatever your dog name is, God can send enough trouble until your dog just come and look at you. Ah, 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 and you know your dog is going through. Your goldfish, Lord, start leaning to the side. Oh, I know oftentimes we say, Lord, uh, open the floodgates of heaven and send down your rain. But some of us have gotten so far away from God until we honestly say, Lord, uh, I recognize that I'm so far away from you. So I'm asking you to send down what you know that need to come in order for me to get my together and I don't altogether know what it takes but this thing have gripped my mind as I told you last weekend gripped my heart that God sends destruction see a lot of things we blame on the devil 
Some people think the tribulation is Satan's work. When you read Revelation chapter 6 through 18, you find that the tribulation is God's work. For I heard the angel cry in Revelation 15 when he said, Who is worthy to unloose the seals? They tell me that a search went on. A search went on in the earth. A search went on under the earth. And nobody was found worthy to unloose the seals. And the seals had to be unloosed. And the reason the seals had to be unloosed was so earth could be dealt with. See, earth, ever since the fall of Adam, had been reeling and rocking with sin. Ever since the days of uh, Adam, uh, uh, the earth had been in decline. And you know they have, even from the political standpoint, this thing that is called uh, global warming. You have one side that says that the earth is heating up uh, and you have another side uh, that is saying, well, it really ain't all of that. But there's one thing uh, that I do know is that sin messes up everything. You get a brand new car and pay $40,000 for it. And in three months, you need an oil change. And in a year, things start leaking. All this is is to remind us uh, that things are corrupt. Can I get a witness here? You buy a brand, a new house, and you move in it, and you may have built it from the ground, but I'll give you about 12 or 14 months. You're going to walk in one day and look over into the left corner of the wall, and you're going to see a crack going all the way down the wall in your brand new home. Don't be totally offset. Just understand that this world is corrupt. Uh, can I get a witness here today? I, there are hurricanes and thunderstorms and earthquakes that uh, is in diverse places and uh, tsunamis that come about. All of this is to remind us that this world is corrupt. Uh, we have sickness and disease. If it's not a cold, uh, it's the flu. If it's not the flu, uh, it's uh, corona. If it's not corona, it's diabetes. If it's not diabetes, it's cancer. If it's not cancer, it's high blood pressure. If it's not high blood pressure, it's low blood. I know I found all of y'all somewhere in there. It's low blood. If it's not uh, arthritis, it's a birth situs and all of them other artists uh, letting us know that this earth is corrupt. Can I get a witness here today? You turn 40 and you start feeling the pain uh, Lord, that you never had before. You fool around and turn 50. You feel another pain in a place you never thought you could feel a pain. And then you live to get 60. And now all your hair is gray uh, and half your teeth have fallen out. Uh, and you're looking to buy some somewhere. All of this is uh, to let us know that this world uh, is corrupt. Uh, so when the cry went out, uh, who can unloose the seals? Uh, I heard the angel said uh, that after heaven was searched uh, and after under the earth was searched uh, and in the earth was searched, uh, a cry came from heaven uh, and said, wait a minute. Uh, we found somebody uh, well who is he uh, he was formally identified uh, as the lamb of God uh, but now he's identified uh, as the lion of the tribe of Judah uh, he is worthy uh, to unloose the seals uh, and my Bible tells me uh, that there are seven of those seals uh, and every one of them uh, the lamb of 
God uh, pulled the scroll back uh, and when that seal was open uh, here come the wrath of God uh, Lord have mercy uh, did things like turn the water in the blood uh, did things like burn up on the grass uh, did things uh, like kill the third of mankind uh, did things uh, like send locusts on the land uh, did things uh, like causing boils uh, to break out on the body of men uh, I heard somebody said uh, Lord just let me die uh, because the pain and the tribulation uh, is so awful uh, there were those that ran to the mountain uh, and said mountain fall on us uh, but God would not let them die and the reason God would not let them die is because God is saying I'm not through yet I want you to go through and pay for what you've done well God what is it that man have done well you remember don't you I so love the world that I sent my only son and gave man a chance and said if you believe in him you won't have to perish but you can have everlasting life I just need somebody for a few minutes to lay a log on this fire and I'll be out of the way God said you rejected my son I gave you heaven's best I gave you my only begotten when there was nobody to uphold by my own on arm, I brought salvation when there was nobody to redeem man I sent my redeemer and prepared a body for him and allowed him to come down to earth and declare the express image of the invisible God what more could he have done he laid the foundation and open up the door and you dare reject him I've got to deal with you so when you say mountain fall on us I'm God I've got the last word the mountain is gonna stay in his place until I get through I stop by here to remind somebody that God is going to cause this earth to reel in a rock. God is going to call this earth to shake. I heard the Hebrew writer said everything that can be shaken will be shaken except that which remain. And the last I looked the only thing that's going to remain is that which is built upon the word of God. Can I get a witness here? So from Revelation chapter 6, Revelation chapter 7, Revelation chapter 8, the seals are being opened one by one, one by one. Here come judgment, here come death, here come pain, here come frustration. What are you doing, God? just roll with me if you are left behind I'm enough God that if you believe in me I'll preserve you I'll keep you why God because the foundation of God stands sure having this seal the Lord knows y'all me the Lord knows those that belong to him so God know how to keep and preserve his elect and when it get down to revelations 18 here come Babylon that whore that is riding high that have sucked in on the religions of the earth I heard a cry that said hey y'all 
line is falling uh, and everybody uh, that have been drunk with her blood uh, they're coming down to you uh, and that's the last event uh, before we get to revelations uh, chapter number 19 uh, I heard the writer say uh, then I looked uh, and saw heaven open uh, I saw one uh, riding upon a white stallion uh, Lord have mercy uh, he had a name uh, that is called faithful uh, and true uh, I looked again uh, and I saw the righteous uh, uh, wearing uh, uh, white linen uh, uh, coming with him uh, I heard uh, the writer say uh, to everybody uh, that's been invited uh, to the marriage supper of the Lamb uh, here come Jesus uh, I heard Isaiah say uh, who is this uh, that comes from Edom uh, and Bozra uh, with dyed garments on uh, I heard him say uh, it's the Lord uh, strong uh, and mighty uh, and guess what uh, everybody that's righteous uh, that have washed your robes uh, in the blood of the Lamb uh, if you die uh, you coming back with him uh, if you live uh, you gonna reign with him uh, is there anybody that's excited uh, Lord have mercy uh, oh God uh, help me preach uh, uh, your divine word uh, in Revelation chapter 20 uh, I heard him say uh, Lord have mercy that there was a throne uh, and he that sat on the throne uh, had a book uh, and the book was open uh, he had another book uh, which was the book of life uh, and every name that was written uh, in the book of life uh, those were the ones uh, that is bidded uh, to reign with him uh, but if your name is not written in that book uh, I saw hell uh, I saw death uh, I saw the lake of fire uh, all of those not written in the book uh, was cast uh, into the lake of fire uh, good afternoon church uh, but I've got one more thing uh, to tell you uh, we get to revelations uh, chapter 21 uh, I told you don't you remember uh, I'm not going to leave you in the valley uh, I can hear the writer saying uh, behold uh, I looked uh, and I saw uh, a new heaven uh, and a new earth uh, for the first heaven uh, and the first earth uh, was passed away uh, I saw Song, a new Jerusalem, a holy city coming out from God as a bride adorned for her husband. I looked around and I saw that death had taken his final wings. I saw that all sadness and sorrow was gone. I saw uh, with the hand of God uh, wiped away uh, all tears. Uh, yes, uh, yes, yes. Lord have mercy. Well, 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 well. Here is my prayer, Lord. Let me get away with sin if I'm wrong search me search me shine the light from heaven on my soul if you find anything that shouldn't be take it out Lord and strengthen me I want to be right I want to be saved I want to behold I heard the old preacher say this world is not my home I'm just passing through but one of these days I'm through y'all one of these days I'm going 
to a place where the wicked will cease from troubling, where the weary will be at rest. Yeah, I'm looking to see his face in peace. You can have the whole wide world. You can have the gold and the silver. You can have the mansions on a hill. You can have the designer clothes. But I got one request. Give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. My rock, my keeper, my refuge, my fortress, my strong tower, my friend in the midnight hour, the lover of my soul. Give me Jesus. I got to have Jesus. He is the best thing that ever happened to me. Shout yes. Shout yes. somebody say I ain't playing I ain't playing <laughs> I got to have Jesus this stuff is all going down one day this building ain't gonna be here oh yes <laughs> but I heard somebody said the earthly house of this tabernacle is dissolved I got another building. Yeah, yeah. Not made with hands, but eternal in the heavens. Somebody give him praise. I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. Hallelujah. Woo! I got to make it. Come too far now. I got to make it. I got to make it in the midst of all of this. I've got to make it. Oh, bless his name. Hallelujah. Can you encourage somebody one more again? Just look at him and say, I'm going to make it. With God's help, I'm going to make it. And we're going to get out of here. I believe that thing. We're going to get out. Listen, when I leave, here's my keys. You can have them right out there. Go ahead, DeMarcus. You can have the car. Uh, DeMarcus said, no, he going up with me. Oh, yeah. yeah. You can have a couple dollars. It's about all I got anyway. You can have all that. I am getting out of here. So when the day of the Lord come, I don't care what our day of the Lord is, you hold on to God. Everybody that's not standing, if you can stand, stand with us. Hallelujah. Alas, the day of the Lord. Hallelujah. It's at hand, but God got something for you and you and you. And if you're not saved, God has something for you. It's called salvation. It's called being saved. It's called being filled with the Holy Spirit. It's called being born again of the Spirit of God. And if that's you today, you need to ask God now, Lord, here I am. I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. And Lord, I'm the sinner and you're the Savior. Lord, save me, deliver me. Listen, you don't have to be in any particular place for God to fill you with the Holy Ghost. God can fill you with the Holy Ghost right where you're at. If you open up your heart and mind and ask him with a repentant heart, hallelujah. It doesn't matter. As a fellow I told you, he was, they was telling him about being saved. And he was 30-some thousand feet in the air. And he said, all of a sudden, he thought about it and was going over what they told him about being born again. And it clicked in right then and there. 
And from that moment on, he had given his heart to the Lord. God filled him with the Holy Spirit. And he was walking for God, as far as I know, the rest of the days of his life. So it's not limited to a local place. It's limited to your heart and your heart condition. If you truly repent, say, God, I need you. God, I can't save myself. I can't go to anybody else to save me, but God, I'm coming to you. And if you come to him, God promised you something. He said, if your heart is broken, if it's contrite, which means if you not only show remorse, but truly repent, God said, I'll save you. Man, it doesn't get any better than that. It doesn't get any better than that. We had someone that called into one of our programs on last week. He was having a situation and a circumstance. And we instructed him and said, here's what you do, you call. The office, call the church, leave your name and number. We called them back and was able to minister to them. It was just a beautiful thing. So if you're not physically here today, you can feel free to call us. That number may be at the bottom of your screen, but 313-895-7464. And let us know your name and how we can contact you and that you are interested in being saved. If you are not a part of a church, you need an assembly. You need a, a church. If you have not been baptized in water in the name of the Lord Jesus, friend of mine, you need to identify yourself with the one who died for you that cleanses you from all of your sin. The one who is buried and who is resurrected. That's our way of identifying where our sins being washed away, him dying for us, him rising. Hallelujah. Now we are walking with him in the newness of life. If you haven't been baptized, we can make arrangements, even in these crazy times. But you call us, you got to let us know. One thing about God is God is public. God is public. This thing wasn't done in a corner. Everybody that comes to the Lord got to do it publicly. Jesus said, if you're ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed of you. Before my Father and the angels. So if you're not saved, you need to come to Jesus call us. Our job is to minister to you and share with you what salvation is all about. So call that number. If you're here in this audience today and you're not a born again believer, you can come to this altar. We'll pray with you. We'll minister to you. You don't have to be concerned. You can come this far enough. Will you come if you're here today? Come. This world is going down. The day of the Lord is coming. Matter of fact, it's at hand. <laughs> at hand has reference to that. It could happen at any time and the process can start. But then it'll eventually get worse and worse. But the only hope is that hope that we have in Christ. The Bible says that those that die in Christ, they're going to get up. <laughs> and those who walk with Christ, we're going to go up with those that get up. Lord have mercy. Are you here today? Saints of God, hold on. Don't quit. Don't give up. No matter what you go through, no matter what you're confronted with in life, hold on to God. Yes, he'll chastise you because he loves you. All I want you to do is to repent. Isn't that interesting? Sometimes people go through all kinds of shenanigans and go through all that instead of just simply repenting. You gotta go through all of that other stuff. Just repent. Hallelujah. Father, we leave all that we have had a chance to minister to today in your hands. Those that is in this immediate vicinity, bless them, God. Touch them, Lord, strengthen them. Help them, God, to know and understand that no matter what happens, the wrath that you are sin on this world, you will protect us, you will keep us, you will deliver us, you will strengthen us, and you just want us to make our calling and election sure by yielding and submitting to you. I pray, God, that this sermon would rest on the hearts of your people. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Lord. You may take your seats just for one moment, maybe two. Let's get our contributions together, our tithe and our offerings. Our brothers are here and they're going to walk the floor. And you that have tuned in, you can give 
and send your contributions in as well by going to our website, phgbc.org, phgbc.org. Go to the giving button, it's green. Click on that and follow the prompts and let us give our tithe and our offerings according to as God has blessed us. Amen. Hallelujah. So let us give and let us give liberally. Thank you, Lord. And we're going to let you go. what you are dealing with. Today, let us rise to our feet. One final prayer of dismissal. And on your way out, I know, like I said, we're maintaining distance, but wave at somebody, speak to somebody. Please don't just jet out and not speak to someone, but as you're on your way to your cars, to the parking lot, encourage somebody. Any announcements, anything else I need to hit on? All right. Father, we thank you for this gathering today. We come now to bring this service to a close, but we rest in your presence. Let us be sensitive to the move of your spirit. Help us, God, that we will be fully surrendered to you. And Lord God, once again, no matter what comes, help us to be steadfast and unmovable. Let our souls be anchored in you, God, and anchored in your word those that may call in from this broadcast Lord help them that they won't give up they won't quit until they make contact God with those that you have left here to minister to them and to help them to understand about salvation and being saved help us God that will do our part those that are sick and afflicted remember them continue to heal continue to deliver and set free these things we ask in Jesus name Everybody that can say amen, say amen. And God bless you until the next time.